Friday's Digest, Season 1, Episode 18. Today we're going to discuss the decision every fellow needs to take when they approach the end of their fellowship, specifically whether or not they are going back home. In my case, this is my second fellowship. My first one was a research fellowship. It was five years ago. And as I was planning for my research fellowship back then, it was in Portland, Oregon, the USA, the idea of not returning home after the fellowship wasn't even an option. Back then, my schedule was packed with fellowship duties and future plans for my med school. So the question, are you going back home after this, was pretty rare. I didn't really hear it. Fast forward to today. I hear this question almost every day, every single day. And the interesting part is that this question has taken a subtle but significant turn. It's now... Are you going back after this? Can you spot the difference? The word home is missing. They're asking, are you going back after this and not, are you going back home after this? I don't know what it means, just an interesting observation in this regard. In any case, nowadays, during my clinical fellowship, I frequently hear conversations about how great it is to stay in the US. The reasons? So the reasons are mainly money and comfort. Actually, when you come to think about it, it's always about money and comfort as the two main factors, in addition, of course, to fulfillment and career options. Over the last few years, I also heard many predictions, like, you'll prefer life in the US once you're done, or they'll offer you twice or even triple your current salary, and that will be only your starting salary. You will make much more money in the US. Or... After two years, neither you or your family will want to come back home. Now, it's about six months left in my fellowship. Decision time, so let's discuss it. I had countless discussions with family, with friends, with colleagues about the stay in the US versus go back home dilemma. Now, every conversation took a different turn But I found that these conversations always come down to the same three elements. First, money. Second, drive. And third, the heart. Let's explain. Let's start with the money. We all have our own views on money, and you don't really need me to tell you how to think about money. But let's focus on how much money you actually need in life. For me, it's simple. I need to earn enough to meet our lives' needs. I've dedicated the whole issue to this topic. I don't have a podcast version of it, I think, but I have a newsletter on it. I'll link it down below in the podcast's uh, description. But here's the bottom line for you, if you don't want to read it. More money equals more happiness to a point. Meaning... If you earn more money, you will become happier, but from a certain threshold, you won't be happier as you earn more. Specifically, there are research manuscripts that point to an annual household income of around $75,000 US dollars as the threshold you need to make to be happy. We're talking household. If you're married, Um, or your significant other lives with you, you both need to make the total of $75,000 or more. Beyond that, extra dollars won't add to your joy. For all of my listeners living outside the US, remember that this threshold varies between countries, okay? It's not the same thing. You have different purchasing power for every currency. For example, for my Israeli listeners, $75,000 in the US is not the same as 260,000 shekels in Israel. Okay, if you do the currency conversion, 3.7 nowadays, you don't need 260,000 shekels to be happy. It's less than that because the buying power of shekel in Israel is higher than it is uh, with dollars. I hope that made sense. The bottom line, it's lower than 260. And again, it's household income. Long story short, if we're talking about doctors and scientists, 
doctors and scientists will probably earn enough to be happy no matter the country they live in. Okay, this is the bottom line. This is this this is the threshold we're talking about. Some of you will want more than that, and that's completely fine, but for me, even if I had more money, that wouldn't cause me to change my lifestyle choices in a significant manner. Yes, I will live probably live in a different house and upgrade my vacations, but my medical profession, surgical profession, scientific goals will all remain the same. I will want to do the exact same thing every single day. Take the, my car, for example. I love my car back home. There is no way I'm replacing it. It's a simple off-road. It's a Suzuki Jimny. It's 4x4, four four, uh, four-wheel drive that can take me anywhere I want. I don't want to replace this car. So this is just an example. But for me, money is not the deciding factor in staying in the US. So that's about money. Let's go to the second one. Remind you, we're talking about money, drive, and heart. So right now, we're at number two, drive. What do I mean by drive? So drive represents what matters to you the most. Is it comfort you're interested in? Or maybe you want more space around you? Or is it being able to buy and get whatever you want? Like, you know, we have Amazon here, whatever we want, we just order cheap and it's at our doorstep the same day or in one or two days. Some people thrive on it. It makes them so much happier. What about job fulfillment? Where do you see yourself making a bigger impact? For me, comfort and convenience are great. Don't get me wrong, they are great, but they are not as important as other factors. For me, I want to work in a place that doesn't believe in the word impossible. In my field of cancer surgery and cancer research, I want to seek better treatments and this part is non-negotiable. This is so important to me, much more than comfort. Bringing new treatment options from the lab to the clinic is my driving force. So this is my drive and this is how I prioritize between them. Of course, it varies between people. You may listen to that and say, no, I, I care more about other stuff. That's just me. Lastly, heart. Take, take the doctors who choose to stay in the US as an example. Now, when I talk to them, I don't hear them say, I stayed because my heart is here in the US. Can we really feel it's home if we stay in the US? Recently, I watched university presidents testify in the Congress. Now, I don't trust the social media clips of this hearing, this testimony. So I watched the entire thing, okay? It was five hours. I watched the entire thing and I will link down below the full version, the five plus hours. In general, the bottom line, if you don't want to watch it, the entire thing, they said that the calling for the genocide of Jews doesn't necessarily break university rules. They said it depends on the context. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details, and it's not that my opinion changed because of this video. I knew that this is pretty much the state of affairs long before this debate and even years before. But for many of my fellow relocators, it was a reality check. I heard Harvard fellows now say that they won't put the Harvard logo on their presentations anymore. And this is just one example. So you don't need to change your mind because one debate in Congress again. But like I said, it's a reality check. It tests your emotions. My emotions? Home is where the heart is. And my heart is in my homeland, Israel. No money or comfort can change that. And with that, we'll end today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great weekend. See you in the next one.